Welcome and thank you for standing by. Currently all participants are in a listen only mode. Today's webinar is being recorded and the recording will be posted publicly. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now I'd like to turn the call over to your host for today, Omari Wooden. Thank you very much, Lisa, and good afternoon, everyone. As stated, my name is Omari Wooden with the U.S. Census Bureau, and I'd like to welcome everyone listening to today's webinar of the Puerto Rico webinar series. This webinar is the fourth and last in our four-part series, a series which we have hosted at the U.S. Census Bureau. This webinar was created to highlight the data and resources available for Puerto Rico. In addition to the data, we're also going to provide an overview of our data tools that you can use to help you access this data. This data is helpful for businesses looking to possibly open a new business or expand their existing business by learning more about your particular industry. Economic development organizations also use this data to learn more about industries at different geographic levels. Next slide. So, as this is our last webinar in the series, in the series, the previous topics are listed on the screen. So, we had a webinar on the economic census island areas. We talked about international trade, county business patterns, and also one of our data tools, Census Business Builder. But today, we're going to be focusing on workforce and small business data. Again, each of these webinars are recorded and posted online under the Census Academy, and you can find that link on the screen and we'll also post it in today's chat. Again, keep in mind all this content is free and it's a great way for you to understand the resources that the U.S. Census Bureau has to offer for you. Please be aware that after our speakers have completed their presentation, we will open up the webinar for question and answer. Also, we will be using the question and answer feature to receive your questions. So at the bottom right part of your screen, where there are three dots, you click on those three dots, you then have the option to select the question and answer feature, and that's where you can post your questions. We'll be sure to answer those questions in the chat, but then there are some questions that we're going to share with the larger group so that everyone has an opportunity to participate. Next slide. So at this point, I would like to introduce our three speakers, Keith Savage, Jeff McHugh and Kathy Bonney. They're gonna be providing an overview of the business trends and outlook survey, as well as the quarterly workforce indicators. Again, highlighting data in Puerto Rico. At this point, I'll turn it over to Kathy. Thanks, Amari. Hi everybody, my name is Catherine Bonney and I'm happy to be here to tell you about Vitos. Uh, next slide, please, Keith. All right, before I dive into the Business Trends and Outlook Survey, also called BTOS, I'd like to provide a quick recap of the Small Business Pulse Survey, which really laid the foundation for BTOS. So at the onset of the pandemic in March of 2020, when the American economy was shutting down and there were rapidly changing circumstances, Census Bureau leadership moved quickly to conduct its first weekly email-only business survey the Small Business Pulse Survey. The team worked closely with federal government agencies, such as the Small Business Administration, to quickly develop content to address program needs while also measuring key items that benchmark to other census programs. Census leadership was determined to capitalize on its success of the Small Business Pulse Survey with the creation of the Business Trends and Outlook Survey, BTOS. While designing this new survey, we combine small business pulse lessons learned with stakeholder feedback, leadership strategy uh, to really leverage the strengths of the predecessor program while addressing some of its weaknesses. The goal for BTOS is to produce near real time data products to capture a true ongoing pulse of the economy. So small business pulse was conducted for two years from April of 2020 to April of 2022. And then BTO started in July of 2022 and was designed to have ongoing data collection and publications, whereas Small Business Pulse had phases and there were breaks in between phases. So with the ongoing nature of BTOs, uh, we collect a baseline economic data as well as any economic changes going on in near real time. Okay, next slide. Let's talk about 
the BTOS concepts or the content. So BTOS used some of the small business pulse questions uh, when applicable. So those are reflected in the blue highlight. Small business pulse questions were designed to be more pandemic focused. But then while we were conducting small business pulse, we realized it could capture other events as well, such as the large winter storm that happened in Texas in February 2021. The small business pulse data captured the impact of businesses during that time. And from this, we learned to design BTOS to capture concepts in a more general way. So changes can be attributed to a broader category of events. So our core concepts are asked in two ways, in the last two weeks and six months from now. So we are able to provide a future projection by asking respondents, how do you think this business will be, for example, how do you think this business will be performing in the next six months? So this is a change from small business poll survey, which asked only about the previous week. So our new concepts are highlighted in green, and these are new as of September of 2023, um, artificial intelligence, uh, inventories, interest rates, and loss from a weather event. And in bold are the questions that ask about future projections. So these are, this is the content that we collect and produce every two weeks. Next slide, Keith. Okay, so for data collection, the respondent email addresses come from our central business register contact table. We mail respondents one time, so one cycle is essentially a quarter, and then we move to email only. Um, and the goal is uh, to hope that people have responded online via the mail so that we can move to email only. As I mentioned, we have ongoing two week data collection periods and publications. So it just, we just keep collecting data and keep publishing. There's no break. Uh, right now, our response rate is about 30% um, for email only. And then when you count in the cases that we have, we don't have an email for it's about 16%. BTOS is collected using our online reporting tool, Centurion. Next slide, Keith. Okay, the target population is non-farm employer businesses with receipts of a thousand or more that are in the United States, DC, and Puerto Rico. Our sample size is rather large at 1.2 million, representing um, 5.6 to 5.8 employer businesses of all sizes, just depending what's on our frame at the time. We do a yearly sample refresh. So companies that are in BTOS for the year will get the survey four times. So we have four cycles before uh, we do the sample refresh. And unlike Small Business Pulse, um, we have a proportional sample allocation. Uh, Small Business Pulse was quickly designed and we just used the emails that we had at that time. Next slide, Keith. Okay, our data products that we have that Keith will go into more detail about. We have our national average state level plus DC in Puerto Rico. We have our NAICS, NAICS sector, which is two digit NAICS, uh, and then the subsector, three digit NAICS. And then we have our 25 most populated metropolitan statistical areas, MSA. We have employment size. And then for multi-dimension, we have sector by employment size. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Keith to dive into our data tool and um, more about our products, including Puerto Rico. So. Take it over, Keith. Thanks, Kathy. <clears throat> so one of the key differences between BTOS and Small Business Pulse is our introduction of indexes that summarize a lot of our key concepts. For example, how a business might be performing currently and also in the next six months. If their revenues are increasing, decreasing, same thing, total number of employees, increase, increasing, decreasing. So generally speaking, that 50 line is average or no change. So we can see here that business and businesses in Puerto Rico responding to our survey feel that they're currently performing above what their average would be. And for the future, they feel 
pretty confident, pretty optimistic that that above average performance uh, will continue. But we also do see with revenues and employees kind of right around that no change line. And also for demand right around that no change line. So not really uh, businesses in Puerto Rico, not really seeing a change um, in demand recently. However, for future demand in the next six months, uh, businesses in Puerto Rico responding, I uh, feel that, uh, feel optimistic that they'll have an increase in demand. So as Kathy mentioned, we have lots of content on our, um, on our survey, one of the new concepts that we're asking about is weather loss and impact from uh, extreme weather events. So you'll see on this map, Hawaii and Vermont really stand out. This was for data collected a few weeks ago. Um, but just a highlight of some of the cool concepts that we can uh, capture here on the Business Trends and Outlook Survey. Um, this along with things like artificial intelligence adoption. Again, um, uh, Kathy went over this, but I, I think it bears repeating, you know, our unit response rate kind of hovers right on that 20 to 30% uh, percent range. Um, and a, as she mentioned, only people with emails listed in the business register will receive this survey after that first cycle, really trying to, um, really trying to push towards that just all email survey. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, go over to the viz here. So one thing on the data visualization that we have here, we'll be sure to share this link. You see two tabs: there's indexes tab and explorer tab. Here on the indexes tab, we're focused on all the kind of key concepts that are summarized by our indexes. So here at the top, you'll immediately see all of the key concepts from our national perspective. So how business owners feel that they're currently performing, um, how they feel that they'll be performing in the future, how they feel that they're, if their revenues are increasing or decreasing or staying the same. We also ask about total number of employees what they feel like the future holds for their employees, if they'll be increasing or decreasing, and so on and so forth. And also we give you a look at sectors and indexes by sector. And we have this cool feature where you can, uh, if you hover over here, you can get the full trend line for that specific index by that specific sector. You can filter by index, you can look at any of these indexes. And you can also filter by the specific collection period uh, that you would like to look at. And again, those collection periods are on two week cycles. Same thing here, state, territory, MSA. You can filter by index. You can also filter by the specific collection period. And if you hover over these states or these MSAs, you can get that trend line for that specific index. And one thing that I just want to point out is if you're looking at this map, um, please note that the MSA color scale is a little bit different from that state scale. So uh, just to be sure not to, not to mix those up. Our second tab here, the Explorer, we wanted to give you the option to not only see kind of the high level, but also have the freedom to explore the data however you wish to. So here on the Explorer tab, you can explore by index. You can also explore every question of the Business Trends Survey. First here, you can choose your breakdown. So you can go, if you wanted to look specifically at smaller employers, you know, you can look at employers that are one to four and even up to, um, we just added larger businesses, uh, multi-unit businesses. You can also look at the, look at the larger employers. But specifically, if we wanted to look at Puerto Rico, we just click on state and territory, come down here, Puerto Rico, and you can really select any and all of these indexes just to get a comparison of how, you know, looking at the current versus the future. 
And then also you'll be able to go through all of the different questions. So if you wanted to look at AI adoption in Puerto Rico, for example, you could look at that. And again, you know, hovering over gives you a little bit more information. As Kathy mentioned, we have a bunch of different uh, data products available for download uh, by national, by sector, subsector, and so on. One thing we'd like to point out is this with the sample refresh and the introduction of multi unit businesses. And because that's such a large kind of sample change, we've. We've tried to keep that data separate since it's not really comparable. So if you go back here to historical data, this would be from last year's data, which was just single unit businesses. We also have an API available. And here in the about the data and methodology, um, you can get any, any additional information and also please feel free to reach out with any questions or any feedback that you might have. And that's it for Beto, so I'll turn it over to Jeff. Thank you, Keith. Pull up my slides here. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeff McHugh, and I am the Economic Areas Team Lead for the Longitudinal Employer Household Dynamics Program, or LEHD. The Quarterly Workforce Indicators, or QWI, are the flagship product of the LEHD program. Today, I will give you an overview of the quarterly workforce indicators, show you what data is available for Puerto Rico, and show you how to access the QWI data using four different data tools on census.gov. First, what are the QWI and what do the, do the QWI tell us about the Puerto Rican labor market? So the QWI provide labor market statistics for Puerto Rico by industry. We have two, three, and four digit NAICS. Uh, we also have worker demographics like sex, age, race, and ethnicity. Uh, we do not include educational attainment like other uh, QWI state releases. Uh, and the employer age and size. The QWI files contain 32 QWI measures that are grouped into four categories. Uh, the employment measures are built from individual employment histories. The primary measure is beginning of quarter employment. Employment change includes measures like hires and separations. Uh, employment change for firms includes firm jobs and firm, firm job losses. And finally, earnings measures, which provide the average monthly earnings of an employee in a reference quarter. Here are the listings of the various levels of detail provided by QWI. In terms of geography, uh, QWI has Puerto Rico totals or county uh, also, county equivalent totals, there are 78 municipios for Puerto Rico, and also metro and workforce investment area totals. QWI has two, three, and four-digit NAICS level detail. And just a note at the bottom, there's some employment not covered by QWI, which, um, for example, is federal employment is not integrated into QWI releases. As I mentioned earlier, QWI is the flagship data product of the LEHD program. The LEHD source data is collected from all active participants in the local, local Employment Dynamics Partnership or LED partnership. Participants in the LED partnership can include all 50 states, Puerto Rico, DC, and the US Virgin Islands. Puerto Rico is an active participant in the LED partnership and the US Census Bureau released the first QWI data release with Puerto Rico as a member of the LED partnership on September 26, 2022. The QWI are created by combining detailed firm characteristics, uh, employment and earnings from jobs data, and worker demographic information. Linking these sources of already collected administrative and survey data provides new information about the economy at a very low cost. This graphic shows the four main sources of data used to create the QWI. The Quarterly Census of Employment and Wages, or QCEW, provides all the detailed firm characteristics. And the Unemployment Insurance Earnings Records, or UI, provides the information on workers. Both of these come from the LED partnership. We also get firm age and size data from the Business Dynamic Statistics, or BDS, 
and the demographics information from census uh, surveys and other administrative records. So the primary QWI measure is beginning of quarter employment, which is an estimate of the total number of jobs on the first day of the reference quarter. This employment measure is currently available for Puerto Rico from 2010 Q2 to 2023 Q1. Our latest Puerto Rico release was on November 1st. I just want to mention that not all QWI measures span the same time period, since some of them can lag the reference period an additional, an additional quarter or two. The release of the primary employment measure lags the reference quarter by approximately seven to eight months. Uh, and I just want to mention a couple things unique to the Puerto Rico release. Uh, first, the QWI data are available for 78 county equivalents or municipios. Also, the educational attainment category is not available for Puerto Rico. It's just these four demographic categories. Uh, before I jump into the demo of the data tools, I just want to point out an interesting America Accounts article written by Moises Yee that accompanied the first Puerto Rico QWI release back in September of 2022. Uh, the article provides some interesting QWI statistics and visualizations showing what drove Puerto Rico's employment recovery from Hurricane Maria. It's an interesting read and a great example of how the QWI helps paint the picture of Puerto Rico's employment trends. Uh, I highly suggest checking it out. Okay. Okay, now that I've given you an overview of the QWI and some background information on the LEHD program, I would like to do a demo of four tools, data tools, you can use to access the QWI data. I'll give you a brief overview of the four tools and demo how to use them on census.gov. Let me switch over here. So we'll start at the LEHD main page at lehd.ces.census.gov. The main page provides recent updates on the LEHD program, uh, details about the program and information on the LED partnership. Next, we'll click over to the data tab. Um, the data tab has sections for each uh, LEHD product. Uh, we'll scroll down to the quarterly workforce indicators here. Um, this QWI section has all four data tools I plan to show you today. Um, before we look at the tools, I want to point out uh, the QWI help box here on the right. Um, the QWI help box has links to helpful documentation on QWI, like QWI 101 um, and Q the QWI data schema for the most recent releases. The QWI data schema is critical to understanding the file naming conventions, variable names, and levels of aggregation of the raw files uh, I'm about to show you. So let's look at the, let's browse the raw files. Um, if you click, go down to this area here to browse the QWI data files in their directory structure, we'll go ahead and click that. And we'll go to latest release and we'll scroll down to Puerto Rico, PR. Okay. Um, so the file naming conventions you see here may seem confusing, but if you look at the QWI data schema I showed you earlier, it breaks down and explains each component of these file names. Um, this FTP site is a dissemination tool. Users can download the raw data files to perform their own analysis uh, or pull the data into their own software. Users can also access files using an FTP program. Uh, so those are the raw data downloads. I'll go ahead and go back to the main QWI page and then we'll click on the next tool, which is QWI Explorer. So this is QWI Explorer. Um, I consider QWI Explorer to be the most user-friendly web interface for accessing Puerto Rico data. Uh, QWI Explorer allows users to custom tailor their requests by industry, demographic categories, and geographic areas. Um, so one of the first questions I always ask when looking at geographic area is looking at a new geographic area is what are the top industry sectors in that area? So let's start by looking at the top industry sectors for Puerto Rico in terms of beginning of quarter employment. Uh, so we'll start up here at the top and choose the different, choose the geography level, which we're gonna choose Puerto Rico. Okay. Uh, and then the indicator, we're gonna keep it on beginner, beginning of quarter uh, employment counts. Uh, you'll notice that there's eight 
uh, measures shown here. Um, you can access all 32 if you were to go up here and click on advanced settings uh, and show all indicators. But for our purposes, we're just going to just stick with the um, default eight indicators. Um, you'll notice some other filters and aggregation levels over here. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, to the right, you've got your interactive graph, uh, which changes its display based off of whatever selections you're making. Um, and then at the bottom, you have the actual table. Uh, okay, so we've got Puerto Rico selected. We've got our employment measure selected. Now we want to just change this to say, let's look at NAICS sectors on the X axis. Uh, and this this um, message is just saying that you can't view this as a line chart. We'll just hit OK. And we don't want to have any group associated with it. So we're just going to say no group. Uh, and then you'll see employment totals uh, by a specific quarter. Um, and you'll see over here that quarters is, um, has been changed to 2022 Q4. Let's look at the most recent quarter, 2023 Q1. We'll hit OK. And then you can actually sort this by clicking here. And you'll see in terms of employment, um, the highest re, uh, the highest uh, indicator sector is going to be retail trade, followed by healthcare and social assistance, and then manufacturing. Um, and then we can also look, say, say you wanted to see these as a, as a time series instead of just for one quarter. Um, you could then say, okay, let's change the x-axis to show quarters. And then we're going to change the grouping to show NAICS sectors. Now you'll notice uh, that this is a bar chart, but let's let's make this a line chart, which is easier to read here. You'll notice over here that the time has now changed to x-axis, so it's showing multiple quarters. Um, and this top line here uh, in dark red, if you click on it, you can actually see it highlighted down in the table, which is a nice feature, which is going to show this is going to be retail trade. Uh, so if you scroll down, you can see retail trade and the time series based off of whatever quarters you have selected here in this quarter selected box. Um, so you, in, in addition to NAICS sectors, you could also look at different um, demographic categories like say sex, you could change that to sex and then you see the breakdown by male and female, the employment numbers. Uh, and then once you have your report in a place where you want it, um, you could go up here and you could download the data by clicking on get data. You could download the Excel files. Uh, you could download uh, many different options for downloading the output. Uh, you can also share the report uh, based on this share request URL. Uh, you could share it on social media. Uh, you could share it with a colleague via email, which is, which is always nice. Or you could just save it for, for future releases. Uh, and then the final option is get report. You can click here and download the, the report as a PDF. Okay, so that's that's QWI Explorer. Now let's hop into the third tool I want to show you, which is the LED extraction tool. Go ahead and we'll click on LED extraction tool. So the LED extraction tool makes it easy for users to pull custom extracts of QWI data based on specific variables. For example, you can use the tool to download an extract of Puerto Rico data for specific uh, three-digit NAICS subsectors and maybe a few specific employment measures. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on all QWI measures. And it's a step-by-step -step guide, which makes it easy. So we're going to first start with number one, geog geography, and we're going to scroll down to Puerto Rico. Uh, and then for this purpose, we can just select all counties in Puerto Rico uh, and then go to our next step, which is firm characteristics. Uh, and then we can say, okay, let's look at um, a specific NAICS industry sector. Let's look at retail trade. Um, you know, you, you could say, let's look at retail trade and then manufacturing, two different uh, selections. So very customizable. Um, we'll leave the firm firm age and size details um, as they are. You can also do breakdowns by that, by private ownership and, and, uh, and private ownership and firm age and size. Uh, so then we'll step into worker characteristics. So you could also see the demographic um, breakdowns by sex and age, sex and education, and then race and ethnicity. Let's look at 
um, male and female. And then for indicators, you know, there's, there's like I said, 32 that you can choose from. Uh, right now, employment is selected as the default, but let's go ahead and add, let's look at hires and separations as well. Um, and then, so that's complete. Let's go to quarters, and then you would just select your time period. So let's look from 2021 on. Uh, and then once you have that done, then you would go to the summary and export tab. Um, now, the size of your, of your report is going to be based off of, you know, how many selections you made. So, some are going to be larger than others and take much longer if you have a lot of selections made. Uh, so, this is a fairly small report, so it shouldn't take that long to complete. I always like to include the labels to kind of give me a better understanding of what the variables are that I'm seeing. Uh, and then you would hit submit request. And then the report comes up here in the window on the right. You could download the CSV. Uh, or you can download the CSV on the metadata in a zip file. Uh, you also have some helpful links down here at the bottom, like the data schema I pointed out before and QWI 101. Okay, the final thing I wanted to show you uh, real quick um, is the is the API. Um, let's see. So developers, this is this is going to be interesting to developers. They can access the QWI datasets by going to the developer section of the um, census websites, you would go up to here in the data and maps, and you would go to developers, and then scroll down to available APIs. And there are several APIs available, including the LEHD API. So we're gonna expand that. And I always tell people to click on the first um, group of endpoints here. Uh, so all you need to do to access this API is to request an API key, which is by clicking on this here. Um, this, this shows you more information about the API, it gives you some sample API calls. Um, and yeah, and that's about it for the demo. I will switch back um, to the presentation. And open it up for any questions. All right, thank you, Jeff, very much for that presentation. Um, I'd also like to thank Keith and Kathy for their content as well. I think you all covered a lot of great, useful information. Um, as we stated earlier, at this point, we're gonna get ready for questions and answers um, regarding anything that we have discussed today. As I stated earlier, if you have any questions, to remember that we'll be using the chat feature or the question and answer feature. So again, at the bottom right part of your screen, where you see the three dots, you'll be able to click on those and then feel free to then ask your question. Um, so as we get ready for those questions that are coming up online, I'd like to remind everybody, so if you can go to the next slide, to something that I had mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation, just to the other content that's been available and presented related to this webinar series. So again, we conducted a webinar on the economic census, specifically targeting island areas. Um, also, international trade, where we're capturing information and products that are in physical goods that are moving between the United States and goods moving from Puerto Rico foreign. Also, capturing county business patterns, where we're now we're seeing that detailed level of geography and information down to the county or municipal level. Um, and then we also have census business builders. So, as Jeff and Keith today went through great demonstrations of a lot of the business tools. Um, Census Business Builder is also one of those tools that also allows you to see information, both incorporating both demographic and economic data. And again, what we discussed today um, covering workforce and small business. So that information today's webinar is going to be recorded and will be available online within a few days. Um, so again, if there's anything that you may have missed today or somebody jumped in late, or something you'd like to hear again, this content will be available for you shortly. So at this point, um, this is probably a question for Keith and Kathy. Someone mentioned in the chat or in the question that data from County Business Pattern, which is a, one of our annual programs, um, can it be compared with BTOS, the Small Business Pulse or Business and Trends Outlook? Or if it could or should not be, what are you all's recommendations on comparing maybe an annual program to 
business and trends? Yeah, I could take that one. A great question. You know, we often are trying to kind of compare uh, BTOS and Small Business Pulse to other economic indicators and other data just to make sure it's tracking the same. Uh, yeah, one of the difficulties, Amari, like you uh, suggested, uh, County Business Patterns is an annual survey. Ours is biweekly. So it's a little bit difficult to actually compare the two um, in any kind of useful way. Um, but comparing, you know, for example, to the quarterly workforce indicators um, or to other kind of more frequent data products is probably a more useful, probably a more useful exercise. Okay, great. Um, let's see. So right now we don't have any other questions. Again, while giving people an opportunity to ask questions, Jeff, if you could go to the next slide. Uh, one thing that I did want to also take this opportunity, so not only for today's webinar, but also something that we've done for this webinar series, is to take the opportunity to gain your feedback related to our presentations, to our outreach and our training. Uh, we're going to add a link in the chat feature that will provide you an opportunity to provide feedback to us on our webinars that we're providing um, to let us know what did we do to meet your needs, what we're doing well that we should continue, um, what we could do better to make sure that we're meeting your needs. Also, too, one of the things is, that we would ask for is if there are additional topics that you would like to hear about, let us know that as well, too. It only takes a couple of minutes, but again, it's a big help for us. Uh, one of the examples of the feedback that we had received was there were times when we used to do larger presentations, larger webinars with much more content, but some of the feedback that we have received from some of our users does have maybe shorter webinars with more specified topics. So that was something that we certainly incorporated. So again, we're putting that information up in the chat. So again, if you could take the chance or take the few minutes to complete that, we would certainly like to hear that. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, there is one question that came in, a general question. Puerto Rico was affected by the pandemic and also weather that hit. Um, how is that considered in the numbers or even how is that in some cases reflected in some of our data? Or what do you all so you see can, um, given that? Given that? Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the data tool that Keith showed, um, you can select the collection period and you can look at the data during those periods that were impacted by the different storms. So, or storm or and um, well, I'll focus on BTOS first. So, if you go, he showed on the data and downloads tab, you click on historical data, and that shows the data from July of 2022 to September of 2023, and you can see data on a two-week basis there. Um, so that's how you would see the most recent BTOS data, just basically looking by collection period. So you would look for the dates you want um, in those two-week period. And then Small Business Pulse Survey, uh, which is mostly pandemic-focused questions, uh, can be found on a different web page. Um, I don't know if we have that linked actually on BTOS, but all the pandemic-related data that we captured from April of 2020 to April of 2022 can be found on there. So yes, we do show um, we do show the responses during those periods. Keith, anything to add? Nope, yeah, no, I'll share the link uh, to the Small Business Pulse Survey so you can see the kind of more pandemic related content. And you can also, there's a data viz tool on there. You can also kind of explore by state um, or whatever breakdown you'd like to. So I'll share that in the, in the tab. But yeah, nothing to add. Great comment on that, guys. Um, one question that I'll mention too, someone said, where is the evaluation form? So if you look in the chat feature, so down at the bottom right, there'll be the three dots that I've talked about, but then right next to that, there's a chat feature. You click on that, and then you're going to see that Lisa has posted the link um, the link says questionweb.com. You click on that. That'll then provide you an opportunity for you to provide your feedback. All right, another question we received, um, just to get you guys' thoughts on this, this is now comparing to another um, survey program outside of our economic directorate, but just to see if you guys have any details or maybe something we can follow up on. Pulling employment from ACS 
versus QWI. Um, any thoughts on those comparisons? So one of the, a part of the question is, which is most reliable? But if there's anything that you could speak to on possibly some of the differences between those two, if that's something that you can discuss. Well, I, I can just say that, you know, that the, the QWI data is being pulled from the administrative, administrative data from the state. So um, it's not going to be survey information. Uh, but I believe there may be some papers out there. If you were to, to email in to me, uh, we may be able to point you to some analysis of some comparison of uh, ACS to, to QWI. Um, I, I can't really speak off the cuff on that comparison, but uh, I think there is some information out there that we can point you in the right direction. So, so Jeff, actually to that point, if you go to the next slide. So for that question in particular, uh, it looks like the name was Brad. Brad, here's the contact information for Jeff and Keith. So if you have that particular question, feel free to email Jeff directly to his point. He said that he could um, do some more research to get some more information. So feel free to send him an email. Um, and he said that he will certainly be able to assist you. So that thank you for that, Jeff, to have your contact. Thank you, Jeff and Keith, for having your contact information available. Um, there was another question that came up, and maybe I will address this if I'm understanding the question. A question came up, what data sets of those include Puerto Rico? So one of the things to highlight, if this is answering the question correctly, that's why we did this four-part webinar series, because this webinar series is highlighting all of the different data sets, especially from the economic directorate that are covering business data. So that's including international. Actually, Jeff, if you could go back two slides, then we'll come back to your um, contact slide. So right here. Uh, so that question is what data sets include Puerto Rico? Here are some of the data sets that include Puerto Rico, which is what we were looking to highlight in this particular webinar series are all the different data sets that we have that are capturing data in Puerto Rico. One of the things that we're also doing internally is looking at other types of data sets that we can possibly capture information specifically in Puerto Rico. So this is what we have currently, but we're also looking at other opportunities to capture more data for Puerto Rico. So hopefully that is answering your question. Thank you, Jeff. If you could go back to you all's contact slides. Okay, so I will see if there are any other questions. I'll give a quick pause to see if there are any other questions. I wanna thank you three for um, answering the questions. Like I said, I'll just wait quickly for a second to see if any other questions come in. Uh, but again, I appreciate you all taking your time, sharing, I think, this valuable information. I also appreciate the time you took to walk through the data tools. So not only providing the overview, Kathy getting into the deep dive of a methodology, but then also providing now the data tools that people can use this information to do their own deeper dive uh, for more information. So. So with that being said, we didn't have any other questions. Uh, we're going to leave the contact screen up as I close out. So if anyone does have any particular questions, feel free to reach out to Keith and Jeff. Um, but again, I'd like to thank everyone to lis for listening in to today's webinar. Again, keep in mind today's webinar will be recorded and will be available online. So again, if there's any other additional content from not only today's webinar, but any of the other topics that we covered in this webinar series, make sure you visit us at Census Academy to view that information. Thank you again, and Lisa, I will turn it over to you. Oh, thank you. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you for your participation. You may disconnect at this time.